Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I dry my own flowers using Wise Dry Silica Gel Crystals. And then I'm going to be using some of those flowers with epoxy resin to make my very own resin greetings cards. So if you like the idea of that, stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Wise Dry. Wise Dry is a desiccant brand specialising in humidity control products for the home and industry and they sell in many countries around the world. But what's most interesting to you and to me is that they make rechargeable colour changing silica crystals for drying flowers. And that brings us on to today's project. So let's get started. When my silica gel crystals arrived, they were double bagged and vacuum sealed, so they were as fresh as they could possibly be. It came with a detailed instruction booklet, so there was no guesswork involved. Anything I needed to know was all there in the booklet. The top of the bag was resealable, so that you have no problem storing it after use and keeping it nice and fresh and keeping the moisture out of the bag. When it's fresh and new, it's this pale yellow in colour. But what it has in there is little orange crystals, which are colour changing crystals. And what happens is when it soaks in the moisture from whatever you're drying out, they begin to change colour. And so you get an overall look of the whole lot changing colour, but it's not all changing colour, it's just like... I think about 50% of them are colour changing crystals. So if you look on the right of your screen, you can see some crystals that I already had. They're wise dry um, silica crystals too, which I already had from a long time ago. And I've used them a lot. And over time, the colour changes as it starts to absorb the moisture. But the great thing is that you can heat it in the oven or in the microwave to recharge it and bring it back to its original condition. So as you can see, my crystals that I've already got really do need to go in the oven. But I did use them today <laughs> because I ran out. To dry your flowers, you're going to need a container large enough to hold your flowers. Mine actually wasn't quite big enough, but it was the biggest one I had. And it helps if it's a container with a lid, which will seal it away from the air. Also, you'll need a mask because you don't want to be breathing in those fine particles of silica dust. I'm going to go through this drying the flowers part quite quickly because the main part of today's video is making something with my dried flowers. But I just wanted to show you how I dry flowers with this Wise Dry Silica Crystal Gel stuff. <laughs> And so what I've done is I've taken some of my older one that I already had and placed a thin layer at the bottom. I wanted to keep the fresh one for the main job of drying the main part of the flowers. So yeah, I've just made a thin layer on the bottom and then it's ready to lay my flowers on top. Sadly, it's the wrong time of year to go out and pick beautiful flowers from my garden, so I had to buy some. And I got this lovely bouquet from Asda, and the flowers actually were really good ones for drying, which was lucky because I didn't know what I was going to get. I ordered them with my online groceries, and I wasn't quite sure what would arrive, so I was really pleased with what came. So some of the flowers I wanted to keep the stems on and some of them I just needed the head of the flower. So I just trimmed all the flowers so that they were the way I wanted them to be and then they were ready to go into the silica. The long flowers which still had the stems were laid down onto the silica sideways and the ones where it was just the heads I sat them onto the silica face up so that when I poured the rest of the silica gel crystals on they would fill up all the spaces between the petals. 
as you can see, really, my container wasn't big enough and I was a bit over ambitious wanting to dry all of those flowers, but I didn't want to waste any. However, I couldn't fit in the third of the large white flowers. I think they're chrysanthemums, but I don't know. I'm not good with flower names, really. My favourite ones were those little white round ones. Those were just so cute. Oh, and I loved the blue ones as well, of course. And the great thing is they really kept their colour with these crystals. So once you've got as many flowers as you can, can into position without touching each other that's another thing you need to try not to let the each individual flower touch another one they need a space around them once you've done that you can gently pour in the rest of your silica gel crystals on the top but it's best to try and go around the flower to give them support underneath before filling in the center of the flower otherwise they'll just squash down under the weight of the silica so give them some support around the edges as you're pouring it in as best you can anyway once I'd got them mostly covered, because I was challenged for space, I decided to do a second layer of flowers. It's probably not the ideal way to go. And I did do a little bit of rearranging um, because I realised that, that I was running out of space and also I was running out of the silica gel crystals. So I had to be far more economical. <laughs> I'd realised that I hadn't left enough space for my lovely rose and there was only one rose and I didn't want to waste it so I kind of dug a little hole in there and moved the flowers around and put the rose in there and again filled it in from around the edges before putting any in the centre. When I've tried drying roses in the past I haven't had much success and I do know why now but I didn't at the time. I thought when I did it before for some reason I thought the longer you leave it in the silica gel crystals the better obviously you know it, it would make sense surely but no <laughs> I was wrong if you leave things in the crystals for too long they get too dry and they fall to bits and that's what's happened to my roses in the past and so this time I checked everything after four days and I felt them to see if they had gone brittle and see if, you know, to you can tell by feeling them if they're dried or not because I just didn't want that rose to over dry. So I didn't film that bit, but I did check them after four days and they weren't quite right. And as you can see here, I've, I ran out of silica gel crystals and I've used the one that really needed recharging because I needed more. Um, so you can really see the contrasting colour there. Seven days after putting the flowers into the silica, it was time to check them again. And this time they were ready. You can tell when they're ready from you just from the feel of them, really. They'll feel a little bit brittle. And even the sound of them, some flowers, if you shake them, you can hear the sound. And I'll show you that in a minute. So, yeah, you can tell. Um, the rose, when I checked it after four days, it felt kind of heavy and cold and it just felt like it was somehow still damp when it's dry it will feel much lighter so there's all different ways you can tell and usually your instincts know you just know when you feel it so that's the best way for me to tell you how to know if it's ready you you, you just will you'll just know <laughs> anyway I'm waffling now I very gently just kept on scooping out and scooping out and scooping out the silica into an empty bucket, which I also use to store it in when I'm finished. Um, and just gently excavate those flowers like you're on an archaeological dig. And yeah, I got there in the end, but it did take me a long time. So let's have a look at the rose. I was very, very careful taking it out with that spoon and once it was out I kind of held it so gently and just turned it over to let all that fine sand just fall out and if you give it a little tap any excess comes out another thing you could do with some of the flowers is blow it but I didn't want to blow this one because I didn't want to separate those petals but look how perfect it is it's just beautiful and the colour has actually stayed the same 
The same with those other white flowers, the colour's the same. And what can happen with some flowers is, especially white ones, is they can kind of go a little bit yellower. Um, but these ones didn't, they kept the colour really well. And so did the blue ones. I was so pleased with the blue flowers. And that's just to demonstrate how you can sometimes hear when they're dried just by giving them a gentle shake or a tap. You know I said earlier on that I checked the flowers after four days. Well I made the mistake of taking out that this one that you can see now after four days to check it and it just collapsed. It was too floppy, it had gone really floppy and everything collapsed. And I put it back in just to see if I could save it but I couldn't. So with that one, I ended up taking off all the petals just in case I could use the petals for something. The other one, um, it was still in its shape really well, but it wasn't ready. It just didn't quite feel ready, so I gave it a couple more days. The mould which I'm using to make my cards today is from Amazon and it's a rectangular mould and it's 32 centimetres by 23 centimetres and it's quite shallow. I'm not sure about what the depth was but it was shallow which was good because it helps you to control the thickness of your cards. You can't make them too thick. Um, I'm going to be cutting them. So once it's all formed, I will be cutting it into six cards. So you don't really want it too deep. And this mould worked perfectly to make sure it was nice and thin. On the piece of paper behind the mould, I've drawn out my plan of how big I want the cards to be. So I knew where to place my flowers. It gave me, it was a really good guide. I wouldn't have been able to do it without having that guide behind it. So it really helps that the mould was see-through. I'm using a mixture of flowers for the cards. Some of them were the ones you've just seen me dry. The foliage, I pressed it because I'd run out of space when I was drying my flowers. I couldn't dry the foliage as well. So that has been pressed. And those little purple status flowers, they were air dried. I just hang them upside down because they dry really easily and really well. And those kind of flowers really don't need the silica gel crystals. I mixed up my resin and it was around 200 millilitres, but really I was guessing um, and I guessed quite well, actually. <laughs> I can't remember the exact amount because I weigh it. And so I mixed up my resin from Resin Pro and I added the gold in interference gold pigment powder, which I absolutely love. Everything will be linked in the description and as, a, as usual, my pigments and resin were from Resin Pro and I can give you a discount for that as well. Now, really, I used the wrong kind of resin. I'd forgotten how thin the eye crystal resin is, which is fantastic if you're making something, you know, like casting something like um, clear crystals or something. It gets really clear. You get such a crystal clear effect with it. But because... Because it's so thin, it wasn't perfect for this. Really, if I do this again, I will use the Art Pro Deluxe, which is much thicker and the flowers won't sink as much. So, yeah, because it was so thin, after I'd poured it, I left it for half an hour before putting the flowers on, just to allow it to thicken up, thicken up a bit. So after half an hour, it was time to add the flowers and I did my usual trick of forgetting to press record. So two of them are already done <laughs> and I just used those lovely little white daisy type flowers. They're not daisies, but you know what I mean. Anyway, I mixed up some more of the eye crystal and it's good that it's thin for this part. It's in that little jug and all I'm doing is dipping the flowers and the foliage into that first so that I know that they're completely coated in resin. And so when they, do, you know, they, pr they protrude from the resin base, they're not going to be immersed in that resin base. So they needed to be dipped into resin before putting onto the base. Otherwise, they would have just been too delicate. You know, you can't just have dried flowers without the resin on. 
sticking out the front of the card, it would have fallen to bits. So that's why I did that. And that worked out really well. I did expect them to float, you know, the foliage. I expected it to float on the top, but it did still sink. So really, I could have got away without dipping those leaves because they sank anyway and got covered in resin. But the flowers definitely needed dipping. Once I'd finished with the flowers and had some resin left, I just added some of the white galaxy starlight glitter from Resin Pro into there and just just generally moved it, poured it around, you know, just around the bottom and places where I thought a little bit of glitter would be nice. Um, yeah, there wasn't <laughs> there wasn't much planning to it. I just put it on there in different places and it, it helps to create kind of a bit of a pattern in the background as well. So, yeah, and then you're not wasting your leftover resin, are you? The next day, I took it all out of the mould and it came out easily. Um, I didn't record that bit. I don't know why. But anyway, it came out easily and all I'm doing is using a ruler and a sharp knife to cut up the indi individual cards. I needed to be really careful with my ruler. I held it at an angle so I didn't squash the flowers because even though they were coated in resin, they were still delicate and I didn't want to crush them. And yeah, just cut it all up using the guides on my cutting mat as a, you know, to make sure I got them nice and square. Next, I used a nail file to clean up any rough bits on the edges and I've got this corner cutting punch which I just used to make nice rounded corners and to finish it off and just make it look a little bit more, I don't know, <laughs> Just I just thought it looked better with the rounded corners. I didn't do have rounded corners on the spine side though because I just wanted a straight edge on the left hand side where the spine of the card would be. Then I decided to give them gold edges using my gold pilot pen, which was almost running out. So I had to keep pressing it down on a piece of paper to get the um, liquid, the paint to flow, but it worked. So I coloured all the edges with that. And also I did a thin line along the top face of the card to just kind of frame the picture a little bit. Now it's time to add the card base to the card front. So we have a card and it's very, very simple. All I took was a sheet of A4, uh, shiny A4 card stock. It's not a very thick one, but it was actually fine for these card fronts because they weren't too heavy. And I folded it. Use, I use my scoring board whenever I'm folding. You don't have to, but you get a much cleaner um, fold. So I scored it and folded it, then drew round the card to make sure I was getting it exactly the right size and I cut it out. After it had been cut out, I used my corner punch again on the outer two corners and then added a layer of double-sided um, tape just to the left-hand side near the spine and then I stuck the front of the card onto the um, card back. The double-sided tape stuck really well to the resin and it didn't feel like it was going to come off. So I was pleased with the result of that. Um, I've just folded the uh, protective paper over at a right angle, as you can see, and just while I get it into this position and then I just pull it off. And that way you don't get any problems if you're not quite in the right position you can still maneuver it a little bit anyway so here are all the finished cards i'll give you a closer look in a second but yeah there's space at the top if you wanted to add some kind of sentiment um i thought about doing that but i haven't yet but yeah I love the finished result. I love how they turned out and my mum's going to be getting one of these for mother's day by now, you might have noticed that those white flowers have gone quite dark in places. And I think what happened was I didn't allow them to dry for long enough. I should have given them longer. Um, yeah, they went a little bit brown in places, but that wasn't the fault of the 
wise dry silica gel, that was the fault of me for not leaving them long enough and being impatient as usual. But everything else dried lovely, especially those blue flowers. And I was just so amazed at how well they kept their blue colour. So we've reached the end of the video and I would like to say a big thank you again to Wise Dry for sponsoring this video and for sending me their silica gel crystals which worked so well. I'm really happy and I will definitely give those a 10 out of 10. Thank you for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.